A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, or Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is at Corinth, with all the holy ones throughout Achaia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all encouragement, who encourages us to, in our every affliction, so that we may be able to encourage those who are in any affliction with the encouragement with which we ourselves are encouraged by God. For as Christ's suffering overflows to us, so through Christ does our encouragement also overflow. If we are afflicted, it is for your encouragement and salvation. If we are encouraged, it is for your encouragement, which enables you to endure the same suffering that we suffer. Our hope for you is firm, for we know that as you share in the sufferings, you also share in the encouragement. The word of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven Thus they persecuted the prophets who came before you. The Gospel of the Lord. In the readings this week, we begin the 
Sermon of the Mount. And just a couple points I feel that God would want me to bring out. One is that the Sermon on the Mount is not addressed to everyone, but it's addressed to the disciples. You know, as you read it, seeing the crowd, Jesus goes up to the mountains and his disciples come up and he addresses them. So this is the way that we as believers are to behave. Also, and although it's not obvious to us because of the culture, the Jews were an occupied people. And there are many scriptures in the Old Testament about God's deliverance which are alluded to in the Sermon of the Mount. So he's addressing this to a people who are occupied, who are being oppressed. And the first four, I mean all of them, but primarily the first four Beatitudes deals with the attitude of trust in God. And the other ones deal with actions that we need to go with. And the, the, the one beatitude that hit me that I should emphasize is that of being meek, because that's one that's very misunderstood. Uh, meek at one time had a good connotation. It was someone who was polite, who was unassuming, um, who knew his place. It wasn't someone who was uh, milk toast, who was stepped upon, you know, etc. And so we were encouraged to be meek. The opposite of that would be arrogant. Um, you know, meekness at this time, the, well, the opposite of meekness at this time would be for a Jew to come up to a Roman centurion and says, why well, you little blankety blank, God's going to th throw you into hell. That would not be meek. And likewise, that should be our attitude. We should not be, be like that. Um, as I was praying about it, uh, again, a story came up, which I think would illustrate this. And again, it has to do with the that Jewish family that saved Jews during World War II, the Ted Boom family. And the situation was that before the, the occupation, but as Nazism began to infiltrate um, the Netherlands, they had a young man working for them who unfortunately adopted the Nazi ideology and began to be, uh, persecute the old workers. And uh, Father Ted Boom eventually had to fire the man because he was causing such a trouble. You know, he was the only man who'd ever be fired from their um, house. Well, the occupation took place, and about a year or two after the occupation, uh, the Boone's, the Ten Boone's family is eating, and there's a knock on the door, and so <clears throat> they get ready for whoever's gonna come, and uh, they open the door, and it's this young man who's now an officer with the local you know, Nazis. And he's come, and he's telling them, well, you see how I'm right, you know, Nazism is going to be winning, and da-da-da-da-da-da. And uh, Father Ten Boom says, well, you know, it appears you may be right. And that, that was it. Nice, humble thing. What this officer didn't know is that the Ted Booms were hiding six Jews three floors above them. So this is the type of attitude. You know, they did not succumb to evil, but they weren't arrogant. And so I think we should pray as things get more challenging for our faith, that we have that type of meekness. Not that we give in to evil, but we don't arrogantly def you know, stand against it. Because ultimately, as God promises, it's the meek who will inherit the world. It was the Ted Boons who were the ones who were victorious, not the man who was um, and espoused Nazism. When we come up again to the Eucharist, let's pray for that spirit of meekness that we can confront the world that we're in today. May Jesus Christ be praised.